Hello lovely people, thanks for joining us again. If you're new to our channel, my name's Arvin and together with my husband Tony, we have been restoring this 30 foot small sailboat for our sailing adventures to live on board and sail around the world. Sailing Wanderlust is a social enterprise. This means that 100% of the profits generated from our videos are funneled towards life-changing projects against human trafficking and modern slavery to help others live a freedom-filled life. Now you can help by joining the Wanderlust tribe and to find out more, click on the link above. If you're new to our channel, welcome. Remember to subscribe, you can just hit the subscribe button below and remember to hit the bell icon so you get notified every time a new video is out. Alrighty, so today we're going to talk about the new electrical system on our small and humble sailboat. One of the biggest risks and concerns we had about rewiring this sailboat is that although we had educated ourselves and read up on how to actually rewire the sailboat, um, and we had done a few small electrical projects by ourselves, the risk of a fire on a small wooden sailboat is just far too great to leave it to our own amateur hands. So, with the help of our fellow friend and sailor Martin, who's a qualified electrician, he supervised us and helped us through this rewiring project. Now we started off by gutting all the wiring on board this sailboat. Yep, every inch of wiring was removed so we had a clean slate to start with. We also then got rid of the lead acid batteries that were in this sailboat. So there were four of them in total and they weren't secured in but we had them removed and replaced with new batteries. The issue with lead acid batteries in a small space is that they can release hydrogen sulfide which is a highly poisonous and flammable gas. So having lead acid batteries on board um, could be dangerous because if they do let off those dangerous glasses it could build up in the hull um, which is flammable. And also if we're underway and we're healed over and the lead acid batteries do leak then they would leak into our hull um, which may damage our hull obviously not to mention damaging our health and also the environment. We have now installed two of these 100 amp hours deep cycle AGM batteries by Writer, one on the port side and one on the starboard side. So we chose these batteries because they're 100% sealed, non-gassing and maintenance free. This means that they will never leak acid even if they're damaged. They're not the cheapest batteries, but they were the right choice for us. If you're interested in these batteries, you can find out more by clicking the link in the description below. So we then wired the isolating switch to the batteries. We allocated battery one to be our primary battery for the engine, and we allocated battery number two to be our house battery. This way we can ensure that we never run battery one flat. Um, so if we need our engine, we can actually get it started. And we will rely on battery number two solely for the house items, such as the cabin lights, the toilet, powering our laptops, etc. etc. Now we get to our custom switch box panel that we made using some marine plywood and we created it to fit the contours of our sailboat. With Martin's expertise, the wires were all crimped. Um, we ran them through and we've connected them. And now that it's a little darker, we're going to try out and see if it works. So we're going to try the cabin light um, as the first one, and then we'll try and see if we can switch on the anchor lights, deck light, and steam light. So here goes nothing. So we'll turn on the battery. One is for the engine. We can run both if we wanted to, but we're only going to run loop number two, which is for the house. We're going to switch on at the panel. And if all things are right, well, we did have an expert helping us, so hopefully this works. Here goes nothing. All right, we have light. It works. We never doubted that we would. We did have a professional on board. Um, so now that this is connected, you can see that we've got um, LEDs installed in here, and they also swivel, so you can go left right depending on where you'd like the light and we're just going to leave it down the center here for now so um and the cables are showing but we will pretty them up with a proper junction um and we have got two more of these babies they're smaller ones and you can see they have their own switches 
Um, we're going to be installing them in the rebirth area and I like the fact that they swivel so we can direct light to where we want it to be. If you're interested in these you can find out more about them um, by look, clicking on the link in the description below. There's still too much light right now to test the anchor light and the deck lights out there um, but we know they're quality lights, as long as they're connected properly, which we have no doubt that they are, we did have a proper electrician helping us, um, they should be quite bright, and as bright as this, hopefully. Ow, that hurt my eye. <laughs> Alright, so, there you have it, folks. We now have lights. This is not the full electrical um, works that need to be done, but it's our first step towards creating our electrical connections. Um, we still have, obviously, the rebirth lights, we need to connect to shore power, um, get our fridge and freezer in. We did have a fridge freezer that we were going to install in here that we normally use for camping, but that's way too large and it just wouldn't fit in the position that we've got it allocated for. And because it's a small boat, we've got nowhere else for it to go, so we're going to have to purchase another one. But once we have all electricals connected, GPS, etc., and uh, deck fittings, and hopefully we'll be ready to go and head out sailing soon. Alrighty, so thanks for joining us. If you liked the video, remember to give it a thumbs up and say hello in the comments below. Till next time, see you later. Bye.